It's time for another disappointing products installment. I think that people don't necessarily like filming these, at least when I watch other disappointing products videos. It seems like people don't want to be negative about things, but really it's just another form of a review. And I think people also do lament that in the beauty product YouTube blog review world, things tend to be almost always positive because we really only talk about the products that we really, really like, and we tend to not talk about the products that we don't really like. But I did one of these a couple months ago and it seemed like people were really into it. So I do have some more disappointing products that I'm going to tell you about today. So I'll start with the makeup bits. Three of them came from the Pettivore boxes which sucks because you guys know that I obsess and swoon over everything relating to Pettivore and I do really enjoy the boxes for the most part. One of them is the All Natural Eyeshadow Stick in Palma. If you remember in my last Disappointing Products video I talked about the concealer, so these came in the same box together probably two or three months ago. And a Palma is just kind of like a taupey brown very, very glittery, not shimmery shadow stick. So I gave this its due process and really tried to wear it and use it. And it's just the, I find that the shimmer or glitter in it, it was just way too chunky for me personally, even just to swipe and wear on an everyday basis. I guess the formula was okay, but I do think that the RMS cream shadows are superior to this. Okay, the next complete bust, and I'll be so curious to hear if any of you tried this and actually liked it or got it to work for you. I'm laughing because it's just like, it's such a ridiculous product to me. It's the Raw Skin Suticles Cream Blush in the color, I don't even, it might just be like one of those one shade blushes, but okay, A. Does that really look like a pretty makeup product? I'm sorry, but packaging and presentation is everything, and this just does not look like attractive makeup, as opposed to something like the RMS pots where it's like beautiful and all packed in there and looks lovely. This just looks like a goopy blob and is not really makeup that I want to use. A. B. It is the weirdest formula, color, application, anything. I did try it on several different occasions and I had a really hard time getting it to show up on my skin. I applied a little, I applied a lot. It's kind of um, almost like a cream to powder formulation. That's kind of like how it wears. And I just frankly thought it was freaking awful. I think this is a horrible product <laughs> and I'm really like taking it to task. If any of you actually tried this blush and liked it, I mean, Godspeed, I thought it was atrocious. <laughs> and then the last little makeup bit from the Petty War box that was just a complete fail for me was the Everyday Minerals uh, Powder Blush in All Smiles. I've actually seen this show up in some other Green Beauty YouTubers favorites videos and I'm like, oh shit, this just like really didn't do it for me. And I tried it multiple ways. so. You guys know I've bitched in many previous videos about how I really can't stand loose mineral products. This is no exception. I just don't like them. I think that they're messy. And I know that it's difficult with Green Beauty because the loose mineral stuff tends to be the cleanest. I think this color is bad. It's quite orange, honestly, at least on me. It's kind of like a peachy pink, leaning much more towards the peach, and it pulls really orange on me. So I tried to apply it just as a powder blush, and it, I didn't really get a lot of pigmentation, and also it has much more shimmer than I think I like in a daily blush, I guess. Maybe it's because I'm so used to wearing cream blushes, but I, you know when like at the end of the day, You've kind of been like touching your face and I feel like I like go like this a lot when I'm like working at my laptop and stuff like that. I looked down at the end of the day and I just have like a bunch of shimmer on my hands and I know that it was from this and I don't really like that. And, and the other way that I tried to use it was actually uh, someone commented and left me this really good tip which I think actually is a great tip for loose mineral powder blushes in general if you find a color that works for you is I mixed it with a little bit of wax lean to create almost like a cream blush. 
So as a technique, I love that. I just didn't really like the color. It almost intensified the peachy undertones orange in the blush. I feel like this will be a, a common one that you guys can relate to if you've tried it. And it kind of pains me, again, to talk about it because it is an RMS product and I love RMS. They're one of my favorite makeup brands, green or not. It's the Buriti Bronzer. The pigmentation is just not fantastic. That's, I'm sure you're not even gonna be able to see it on my finger. <laughs> uh, or swatched, maybe a little bit. But it's quite uh, a weird product. So it's marketed as a bronzer, obviously. My problems with this are kind of Basically that it's not pigmented enough to use as a bronzer, and I think that it's a little bit not the right formulation to use as a bronzer, and I don't really like using cream bronzers, so that would be another reason, but if I had to go back, I would not have purchased this. Now that I have it, I use it as kind of a all-over eye swipe cream shadow if I'm kind of having a low makeup day and I don't want to do liner or lots of mascara or anything like that. It's kind of a nice little no makeup makeup look, but, and you could probably even use it as a blush if you just wanted kind of like a little bit of color, sun-kissed color to your cheeks, but I think as a bronzer it really fails and yeah, I'm kind of bummed I bought this. And the last makeup bit actually is something that I quite like, but the reason that I'm including it is to potentially start a conversation about an ingredient. So this is the Physician's Formula Happy Mood Booster Blush in Warm. I actually do quite like this. The color is very pretty, it's very brightening, it's easy to apply, the texture is really nice, and it's affordable. However, the main ingredient in this, and in most conventional high-end and low-end uh, powder products, is talc. This came up in my dry shampoo review video, and I just am wondering what you guys think about talc. If you don't know, there is some sort of controversy around talc having naturally occurring asbestos in it. Granted, you're using it in such a small amount, it's not a big deal. I think it's more of a big deal in like talcum powder that, you're, that people like douse themselves in and get mesothelioma and then they, you know, make commercials about personal injury lawyers and mesothelioma. Anyway, I don't think it's like a huge deal. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'd know that I'm not a huge ingredient purist and I kind of don't believe we can quarantine ourselves from the environment and makeup is like such a small sliver of what we're exposed to on a daily basis. If I have the option to buy a talc-free product, I think in the future, I probably will. That being said, I looked up the ingredients in my Tarte Exposed Blush. This also, the first ingredient in this is also talc, so I think all the Tarte Exposed Blushes probably have talc in them. Interestingly, the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders and Blushes do not contain talc, and two other options for talc-free powder blushes are Mineral Fusion and 100% Pure. So. If I'm in the mood for a powder blush, those are probably the brands that I'm going to investigate next. Mm -hmm. I do have a couple of makeup brushes that I regret buying and sort of wish that I hadn't. Three of them are real techniques and one of them is eco tools. The first one is this Kabuki brush from Real Techniques. I actually bought it look at like splits open like that, which is supposed to help with washing it, I guess. I don't really like small travel brushes, honestly. Like, they don't really fit anywhere. You have to keep them separate, and I just don't find that I really have a use for this. I bought this because if any of you watch Makeup by Allie, she's not a green uh, beauty YouTuber, but I do really like her videos. She had gotten this and used it for, like, uh, touch powder touch-ups during the day, which I never do because I'm not oily at all and I don't ever need to do a powder touch-up. But that's why she just kind of looked nice and I was like, yeah, maybe I'd like to have that. Totally wish I hadn't bought it because I never use it. The other two Real Techniques brushes must have come in some kind of set because I don't think I ever would have bought these as individuals. It's the pointed foundation brush. Like, look how small that is. Are you gonna get like, I mean, maybe under your eyes. It just seems like ridiculous. And then this is the Essential Foundation Brush, which is a little bit bigger, and I guess you could get like more surface area on your face, but I prefer more like a buffing brush if I'm going to blend in my base, so I have absolutely no use for these at all. Then the last thing is an Ecotools brush, and 
the difference with my Eco Tools perspective and my Real Techniques perspective is I actually do think that the quality of Eco Tools brushes is not fabulous. I have tried other ones and I've ended up throwing them away just because I don't really think that they're that good. This is the fan brush. I just like really felt like I wanted a fan brush and this one looked intriguing and I I don't think I've ever used it. It's just a little bit big for a fan brush. I think that the main purposes for these are to apply highlighter on the tops of the cheekbones or I do think some people will also use something like this to carve out a contour but I have other brushes that I would use that for so I literally have never used this once and I feel bad throwing it away. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It sucks. A couple of hair care products that have been a bit disappointing. The first is this John Masters Organics Sea Salt Spray with Lavender Sea Mist. I've had this for probably four years and I've used, I guess, 40% uh, maybe. Kind of surprised I used that much. I never ever reach for this. If any of you remember the John Frieda Beach Waves. If anybody remembers that product, please leave me a comment because I was wholeheartedly obsessed with it in late high school, early college, and then they discontinued it and people were like paying tons of money for it on like Amazon and eBay. I love a good texturizing sea salt spray. I find that my main problem with it is that it dries out my hair, so I can't really use it that much. For some reason, like none of the other conventional like spray sea salt sprays I've tried like I've also tried the bumble and bumble surf spray which I liked back in the day and I just don't think that this sea mist performs as well as conventional texturizing sprays I've used honestly I'm probably gonna throw this away because I never ever use it okay this like sort of pains me to talk about too I don't it's like hard to talk about a brand that in general you really like but they really kind of miss the mark on a particular product at least for me this is the Josh Rosebrook Deep Nourishing Shampoo. I love the brand. I've actually met Josh Rosebrook at a meet and greet event. I love his skincare uh, more than the hair care stuff that I've tried. This is completely non-sudsing. So if that's an issue for you, I would definitely skip this. And it's even when I washed my hair according to the instructions, which is... <clears throat> You basically are supposed to divide the scalp into four areas, massage a small amount into each area, leave in for one to three minutes, allowing the micronutrients to stimulate follicle circulation and nourish the scalp. I did that. I've worked with non-foaming, non-traditional shampoos before, and this just really didn't get my scalp clean. I don't, I don't know if it was me. I don't know if I have a particularly dirty, oily scalp but my hair was greasy after washing my hair with this. And I have heard other people talk about this as being like a very clean product, euphemism for not potentially not as effective as you might like it to be. Maybe if you had shorter hair it would work better, but for anyone that has like chin length and down, I think you'd have a hard time using this. I will say, however, that I really do like the conditioner. It leaves my hair really soft. And smelling really good so I would definitely buy the conditioner again but the shampoo was like a big fail thankfully I only bought the little sizes <laughs> the last two things are sort of body care products I hate this with a passion vehemently hate this lotion this is the Acure lemongrass and Moroccan argan oil firming body lotion I will also say that the unscented cocoa butter CoQ10 a cure body lotion is typically my go-to and I love it and it's generally tends to be sold out on Vitacost a lot so I threw this one in as a replacement and I just I hate it I hate everything about it I'm using it because I don't have anything else right now it's not that moisturizing I don't think it does anything to firm your skin I don't like the way that it smells. I just really don't like this. And they make two other scents. They make like the lavender one, which holds no appeal to me. I generally don't like lavender scented things. And there's also, I think, a mandarin one, which after trying this, I just kind of want to go back to my unscented, highly moisturizing one, which I think is great. The last thing that I really regret buying, because again, this was quite expensive, is the Vive Sana Solar to Polar Ultra Moisturizing Sun Care for Face and Body. It's an SPF 40 organic, non-toxic, very, very clean sunscreen. I bought this 
four or five years ago, so it's honestly probably not even any good anymore, but like I literally used like 10% of it. To be, I bought it with the intention of buying it for my face before really thinking about the fact that a lot of the face products that I use, tinted moisturizers or what have you, already have SPF in them, so I don't really have the need for another facial sunscreen product because I'm really happy with my Juice Beauty CC Cream. And something about the formula, it like solidified, so it's really, like I can't even get it out of the tube. That could just be because this is really old. This is definitely getting thrown in the trash after this video. I never really used it even for my body. It was very thick and hard to spread. It left a white cast. And I bought this initially because it was on Spirit Demerson's favorite products on Spirit Beauty Lounge when I was like obsessed with them when I first started buying green beauty products. And it got a lot of raves and it was kind of the top of the line product at the time. Now there's been like a big proliferation and I think that there's a there are many more options out there. I don't know if this was me or I just, I don't even really go in the sun that much. I tend to avoid the sun rather than put sunscreen on and actually go in the sun. So yeah, this was like frankly a big waste and I wish I hadn't purchased it. That's it for my second installment of Disappointing Products. I hope that you learned from some of my mistakes and don't purchase these products. If you have used them and they worked for you, let me know. Or let me know if you have thoughts on the talc issue that I mentioned and its presence in powder products. Thanks so much for watching. You guys are the best. You leave me the best comments that make me so happy. And I love responding, so definitely feel free to chat for me. Ramble as much as you want. I feel like everybody apologizes for leaving really long messages, and I'm like, no, like, leave me a novel. <laughs> like, I love reading them and responding to them. So I will see you guys in another beauty video really soon. Take care. Have a great week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.